everybody, you're watching Call the Corn Star. If you guys are really enjoying these daily videos, be sure to hit the thumbs up to let me know you like it. Hey, Neva, what you got there? kind of grapes. I don't know. They taste like candy and I don't like them. You guys remember that super awesome piece of technology for our sprayer trailer called the Mixmate Fusion? Let's go work on it. Good morning. I tell you what, I started my morning out great. Somebody made us some really, really good jelly. It's corn cob jelly. No kidding. It's made out of corn cobs from the back of the combine and that was really, really good. So I had it on my peanut butter sandwich this morning. No Heinz ketchup, just corn cob jelly and peanut butter oh i feel great this morning i'm getting ready to go over i'm loading up ronnie here pretty soon with some beans and then we're back to the shop we got some exciting stuff going on there and if the boys can handle it back home i might go jump in the excavator good morning good morning hi thank you all right brand what do we got on the plans for today a lot of building a lot of plumbing uh, we're going to get a boom put on the side of here. We're going to get a ladder so it's easy to get it on off the trailer. We're going to make this thing look nice. Can't forget our parts list. Ah, we're here. Got to get parts. All right, all right. What is the deal here? I just come into the shop. I don't see... Whoa, man, Cole, your phone, your camera is going wacko on me here. But I come into the shop. I don't see... Cooper. So I call Cooper. He's on the way to get some metal, some parts. Gonna do some revamping on the trailer here. I don't know what he's up to. I call Cole. He's on the way to another place to get some parts. Gonna do some revamping on the trailer also. So you know what I'm gonna do? Excavator is calling my name. I'm gonna run out, jump in the excavator. I gotta go out and check everything on it quick, but I'm gonna fire that thing up and I'm gonna go out and dig out some trees. I'm gonna have some fun. I need to call readers too and say, hey, they heater don't work because the windshield's broke what happened oh yeah i forgot i broke the windshield so i guess uh but the new windshield did come so got to get that put in one of these days otherwise let's get things started we got a few parts we're laying them out on the ground right now to make sure we got everything we had to travel an hour away in order to get all this stuff so we don't want to get home then find out we're missing one piece and then have to track all the way back up here so we're just taking the time to do this now oh hey guys look at this rooters i mean readers we want to shorten the three that go through the Death, right? Doug's disappointed in me. <laughs> Not only am I struggling with basic math today, I picked the whole thing up before we were finished with our little diagram. <laughs> right now I'm out with the Hyundai getting this excavator ready for the morning. Was just checking the oils and all that stuff. Man, it's a big cylinder. Water, oil, everything has been up to snuff every day and we've been working this girl pretty hard. Hopefully everybody's checking in on readers. Look up their web page. They got a lot of stuff you can rent from them not just excavators but all kinds of different equipment i'm out of breath after running around this thing grease it and everything where's ya been taking about a tube of grease to grease her up but i'm keeping her in top shape so when it goes back they know we take care of it the only thing so far i screwed up is broke the window i was running the excavator and i started hearing this beep and i thought what our fuel is about out so i need to quit and go get some fuel but speaking of fuel i need some lunch i'm hungry <sighs> i'm doug applegate one of the creators of the mix bait system anyway we do chemical mixing and we'd like to make it easier for you we do all the record keeping measure products by weight and by flow meter sometimes we compare it a little bit like um, you're out of steering your tractor once you've used something like this it takes stress out of your day makes everything go faster makes it easier for you. This is automation, so you get automatic records and you get a lot of speed because everything happens in real time. So we can pump bulk chemicals, we can weigh uh, like jugs and things. So that inductor is unique. There's nothing else like it in the industry. So the reasons why we decided to get this here on the farm, in the past, it took us just about 20 minutes to fill our sprayer. With this unit, Doug says we can do it in around five minutes. Absolutely. Whether you've got jugs, you've got dry products, you've got bulks, we can handle all that. We can size the system to get it done quickly. And the second reason we decided to go with something like this is last year we had a hard time keeping track of how many chemicals we used and oftentimes we were using way too much in a field so when we got done at the end of the year we had to go and order about 50 gallons more of a, one particular chemical that cost $65 a gallon. How accurate did you say it is? We measure down to a hundredth of a gallon. So if you're pouring a jug, that's practically an ounce that you can measure it to. So if we would have had this last year, we would have saved 
50 gallons at $65 a gallon. That's a really good payment towards this thing. And it's fast, so you don't have to take a lot of time to use a measuring pitcher to measure those odd amounts. And as always, guys, the link to their website is in the description. So if you have any questions, if you want to do any more research, just click down there. There's phone numbers, emails. You can get a hold of them. They all came out square, too. Don't know about you, Natalie, but I'm getting hungry. Mama Cornstar is bringing home pizza. Yeah, I knew that. It sounds pretty good. Yeah. And there's brownies inside, too. Ooh. Homemade. How old are you guys? Seven, five. I'm a... Okay. <laughs> I did that yeah. And we made it back. Okay, now that we're back at the shop, doing some fabricating. Well, while he's doing that, I'm gonna start plumbing up here. Get this stuff all kind of laid out. So, the joy of putting all these threaded fittings together. Cooper, why does it seem like everyone who comes out is super tall? Because we're short. Ooh, you got all the tools. Getting the heavy gear out here. Now, if I had to say, I'd say this hose has definitely seen better days. Are you excited? It's like toy box here. So what Cooper and Brent are doing right now is they're making a boom. So the boom is gonna mount right here just in front of the wheels. So what we're gonna do with that is take our hose that we use to fill our sprayer, we're gonna put it in there and it's gonna be able to swing out. So now we're gonna be able to move this hose around a whole lot easier. And then Neva and Natalie are learning. Okay, let's be careful with this ladder now. All right, Doug, if you fall, I got it on tape. So in our semi-trailer on the past, we ran all of our plumbing to the very back of the trailer. And we also had everything running on top. We're wanting to change that up all this stuff is going to be underneath the deck of the trailer we're gonna have a motor here we're gonna have a motor there and then our input and output areas are gonna be just right under the deck on this side it's gonna be really nice I'm making out, Neva. I just finished them. So now that we're adding the mix mate, we have to have two motors. So we figured this is a perfect time to replumb the trailer. It's gonna be a lot better now. Okay, we need to get some stuff to seal our pipes. This one's all dried out to the star. Now we're making the spot where it mounts to the trailer. It's gotta be square, otherwise it's gonna go everywhere and we where we don't want it to go. Looks like Cooper's got the boom all welded together here. Looking nice. Yeah, you can definitely tell you learned how to weld after me. How are we gonna make sure Renee breathes this way? That's when we hang the boom and start measuring down the side of the trailer. New use for an anvil. Look at that, all the way on. Sweet. Now we gotta goop all these things together so that way they don't leak. This doesn't take very long, it's just time consuming. <laughs> hey buddy. What do you think, Dad? I like it. looks really, it looks professional. There we have it, guys. Cooper got the boom on. A lot better than dragging the holes around, huh? I, I don't know. I kind of like doing it the hard way. Beyond this, there's going to be a, probably another 10 feet of hose. So that way you still have some flex. And the way this is designed right now, the end of this, when swung all the way around, is at the back edge of your trailer. So you'll have 10 feet of hose hanging out the back edge of your trailer, so you can still load from the back if you decide to. Just look at it, guys. That's awesome. We still got to put a PVC see pipe on here so this will sit inside of that. You ready to start drilling? I've been ready. Let's do this. <laughs> Jack Cooper's fixing some mistakes. Got one done. Four to go. So what do you think of the install so far? I'm liking this. I, I really like when we uh, have plumbing below deck because it just keeps everything clean on top. I think it just looks a lot more professional when you're all done. It's looking quite different. You look ugly, buddy. Doug says the trick to these is to use spray on wax. What else? Too much muscle. I remember putting them on last time we used a little sledgehammer and a block. Yeah. <laughs> you guys ever see sumo wrestling? <laughs> you ought to see them when they fight a bull constrictor. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Now, Neva, I want to see how your reactions are. So I'm going to hit your funny bone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dad, I trust you. Yeah. <laughs> Look how seamless that is. Goes right under the deck. Now we can't accidentally crush it when we're setting totes on here. And then up here we have all the basics of the mix mate tied together. We just need to get the pumps hooked up. And then we still gotta get everything drilled through and hooked up underneath on this side. Hey. Hey, Cole, to the box. Pit Viper sunglasses. So the guys who are at our shop right now are the owners of Praxidine, which is the company that makes the Mixmate Fusion. So the two people here are named Doug and Brent. But for some reason, Dad can't seem to remember the name Doug, and he keeps calling Doug Chuck. No, oh, hey, Chuck. Hi. <laughs> hey, morning, Cooper. We got a boom on our trailer now, guys. Look how good that looks. You did a good job, Coop. 
We are missing one of these. So I'm gonna do a little bit of calling around, see if I can find one at a store where I don't have to drive three hours to go get it. Wish me luck. Call the first place that didn't have it on hold right now in the second. Hopefully they have it. I do have one in my hand. Now I have to drive 35 minutes instead of an hour and 35 minutes. We're here. It's blue, but it'll work. It's starting to rain. You guys know what we have to do. We got to go out and uh, put a tarp over the excavator cab. We don't want a wet cab. Better than the window? It's good. It keeps the sun out of your eyes when you're running it. Cog, what's your favorite thing about what you do? You know, I really like creating things and building things. Working in the shop and doing projects like this is one of my favorites. So we did some really interesting calculations last summer. We looked at how long it takes to fill a sprayer and the efficiencies of the sprayer. And when you have a 1200 gallon sprayer loading in 20 minutes, it has the same productivity as a 600 gallon sprayer loading in five minutes. The guy who bought that 1200 gallon sprayer and has taken all that time spent $125,000 more roughly for that big sprayer. Could have bought a mix mate and saved himself a lot of money and enjoyed the loading time as well. It looks like RD2T or whatever that little computer is. We have a really little sprayer. We've got a spray coop. It's an old one. We've had it for a long time on our farm. We farm about 1,500 acres. We spray the corn beans twice with it. So we're doing 3,000 acres roughly a year. We put about 80 hours on that machine last year. So it hardly needed one oil change for the year. We had to run it efficient to get that few hours on that machine. So 300 gallon tank, we're loading a lot. A machine like this makes it quick. To put that into perspective, we put over a hundred hours on our sprayer, which has a 90 foot boom and a thousand gallon tank. Hopefully we'll put like 30 hours on our sprayer this year. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have a few more hours than that, I'm sure. We had a lot of hours of just sitting there idling more fluid. Yeah. We never shut it off once right. you start in the morning. And all of that automated chemical mixing and all of that automated mixing stuff is really nice. But you guys want to know my favorite thing? See this little guy right here? That measures how much product is going into the tank of the sprayer so I can set it at a thousand gallons. That valve will shut off once we hit a thousand gallons. So Cole's not going to have stuff running over the top of his sprayer. No, that, that never happens. No, no. Let's just put this into perspective real quick guys. Let's say we can get 10 loads sprayed off in a day. So 10,000 gallons. That means we have to fill 10 times. If we're waiting 20 minutes of time to fill, that takes 200 minutes. Now let's say if we can do five minutes of time at 10 loads, that's 50 minutes. So that's over two hours that we're able to go out in the field with our sprayer. We can spray almost 100 acres an hour. That's an extra 200 acres a day. What are you gonna do with all your free time, Cole? Probably start a YouTube channel. <laughs> do you know if we have Teflon tape? I gotta see if we got some, otherwise I might have to run to town and buy some. Uh, I think it's in the silver toolbox. I think it's in this drawer. We might have some. What's your favorite thing about what you do? I like seeing everybody's farming operations and just getting to understand how everybody does everything differently. So normally when we work with people, like we work with some really impressive, really intelligent people, but just talking to these guys, like when we first met Brent, he walks in, he's like, Hey, I gotta show you the twin turbo setup I built for my truck. A little later, he's talking about how he wants to put a joystick in his combine instead of a steering wheel. Who built the row shut offs for their planter? Um, the, actually, I oh, built no. those. You build a row shut off for our planter. What year did you build these? 2006 or 7. Oh, yeah, just sounds like super common everyday stuff that we always do. You guys can turn your bin fans on and off from your phone, right? How, how'd that come into play? So, Luke, our other son, he bought some little controllers that are cloud connected and he set up a service to pull in weather data. And he built some little boxes to go on the bands to turn the fans on and off. It happens automatically. I can take my phone out and see the status, see how many hours it's run. It's pretty handy. And another project that we did, 2001 or two, we built a remote control for our uh, tractor that goes on the auger. So we can pull up, we always have the auger up to the bin with the tractor and we put a gravity flow wagon on it and we put a proximity switch at the bottom of the wagon. And so we have a remote control in our grain cart tractor. We can pull up and as we're pulling up, we can hit the start button on the remote and it'll start the auger tractor. And then when we start unloading into the wagon it'll automatically rev up the tractor and when it empties the wagon out it'll empty the auger idle it back down and shut it off so we just unload the grain cart and drive off grandma Joni <laughs> lost her job because she was the one that was starting the tractor and running the tractor but 
she was okay. So see what I mean guys, not only do they have an awesome product, but they are some seriously innovative farmers. They're on top of everything. They are extremely sharp. It's just mind blowing what they're able to do. They've opened my eyes to so many things I didn't even know were possible. Putting air hoses together under here in the dirty, dusty. Looks like we got everything plumbed up. Battery box is on. Now we need to drill a hole somewhere here in the side of the trailer. Run electricity to it, that way it can power our battery for the mix mate. Making progress. Cooper's fabricating one last thing. He's making a safety stop for the boom so that way it can't accidentally come out. What you doing, Nava? Right now, Daddy Cornstar is trying to get power supplied to the mix mate. We had to uh, do a little custom fabricating here in order to get to the wires on the inside. And basically, it looks like it's a really nice setup in there. Everything is all together. Waterproof, big, thick wires. But that means we can't get it apart to add new wires in. We're going to end up cutting another hole here and we'll put another plug in inside the trailer. We'll run the wires down the inside of the frame so they'll be all hidden. So after we run the wires down the frame, we're going to bring them to right here. We're in the middle of drilling this second hole but the dug broke a bit so we got to find another one but we're gonna put battery terminals right here so not only will we have a really convenient spot to hook up jumper cables or battery charging cables we're gonna hardwire the mixmates battery into these on the back side so that way these wires will be hidden and then the mixmate battery will be able to get charged off the semi battery well not charged off the semi battery charged off the alternator on the semi but you guys know what i mean chuck are you breaking more stuff yeah <laughs> telling you guys i'm a big fan of these shades ViperSunglasses.com. Links in the description. If you use the code that's also in the description, you can get 10% off. Don't spill. Now that we finally got her done, how do you feel? Good. We're going to hear it start pretty soon too, I think. Okay, guys. Now that we got everything hooked up, let's do a little simulation here on what it's going to look like when we fill our sprayer. By the way, just look how clean this looks. You guys did a good job. This is me simulating driving my sprayer. I'm empty, so I'm pulling up to our sprayer trailer now. I'm on the wrong side of the trailer. Okay, now we're over here. I got my boom. We're gonna hook this up to the front of our sprayer. Make sure our valves are open. Climb our ladder that is way safer than this one. Slide our tablet into this nice holder. Turn it on. And then we gotta pick which mix that we're putting in. So we already have this one selected. So many of you guys have known Daddy Cornstar for quite a while now, and you know he's pretty tech savvy. Right, Dad? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you wanna run this for us real quick? We're running about quarter throttle because we're breaking in this engine right now. So after hitting the start button, the first chemical is being automatically inducted. It'll keep working its way down the order line until all the bolt chemicals are inducted. So now Daddy Cornstar is starting his hand pours. As Dad pours more in, the mix made scale picks up what he's putting in so he can see exactly how much product he's put in at any given time. And then between each hand pour, the mix mate automatically rinses itself. Now that all of our chemicals have been inducted, we just need to wait till our desired amount of water has been ran through the pump and then everything will automatically shut off. So that's the basics of the MixMate, guys. This thing is as simple as it gets. You're literally pressing buttons on a tablet. You follow the directions. Is there an age limit on this? We don't have any age limits set. <laughs> if you can read, you can do this. Okay, guys, we're gonna rewind to last year real quick, and we're gonna show you exactly how I used to do it. Okay, we're pulling up in the sprayer the same way. Walk all the way to the back of the semi-trailer. Start the motor. Walk all the way back up here. Climb the super safe ladder. And then we just had a single inductor. So I had my bulk chemical tanks over here. I'd walk over to it, grab the hose, set it in the inductor, walk to the back, turn on the pump, sit here and watch a number on the meter that is not accurately calibrated. Then I'd wait till it gets to my desired amount, cut it off, walk back to the inductor, grab the hose, set it back up here, do that with my other two bulk tanks. Then I'd walk over here and I'd grab my hand pouring stuff, try to figure out how to get four and a half gallons out of two and a half gallon jugs. And then once this ran out, then I'd fill it up with water and then I'd suck it out again so that way it rinsed out the inside and then i'd climb up on top of the sprayer and i'd have to follow the water line on the side of the tank oh you did it that way i just waited until it was this far from the top and then once the water line got to 950 gallons i had a number in my head that i would count to and i knew once i got to that number i needed to be shutting the pump off so then i'd climb down the sprayer while i'm counting in my head walk back to the back of the trailer shut the pump off and i'd take off and i'd go spray and then halfway across the field i realized i forgot to put one of the 
chemicals in. And this whole process would take 20 minutes. So once you see how we used to do it, this just only makes sense. Oh, I, I'm not gonna know what to do with myself. Cooper said we're gonna have to put a treadmill up there. Not gonna be walking three miles just to fill this prayer once anymore. So on the behalf of all farmers, I would really like to thank you guys for making this. This is incredible. I think it's absolutely game changing. It's really gonna help a lot of people. So thank you. Appreciate it, thank you. Mama Cornstar makes great brownies too. Delicious. <laughs> if you need to see more of what's going on, they do have a YouTube channel too. Doug says it's not quite as entertaining as what we do, but you can see this thing in live action and they have all the features. They know it like the back of their hand. I don't yet, I'm learning it. Everything in there is in the description. I'll link the videos up here so that way you guys can go check it out. But this is the end of the video, so if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, ideas, I just wanna compliment Cooper's mullet. Be sure to write that down in the comments and don't forget to hit the subscribe button, that way you'll be notified when I post new videos. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>